George Floyd. We'll see you right back here at the desk afterwards with all of your news and weather updates. There's a place to share gossip about the office party fun and a place to share the story you tell everyone. There's a place to share a laugh about when things went wrong and a place to share the video of you dancing to your song. There's a place to share spare change, lunch, and your time. But we could all be better at sharing how we're feeling inside. 76% of employees have struggled with at least one issue that affected their mental health. When you share, you're not alone. I see most about it is being able to tell people stories. I spent a number of years in Cleveland and Cincinnati, and it's given me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. When I won my Paralympic medals in 1984, the unemployment rate was more than 7%. Today, it's far less. Yet 80% of people with disabilities, just like me, are still out of work. It's time we stopped focusing on what people can't do and invest in what they can do. People with disabilities are persistent, driven, and capable. It's time to look closer at how we hire. Visit nod.org slash look closer. Please welcome tonight's presentation. When I grow up. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to borrow a lot for an education. And then not know what to do with it. When I grow up, I don't want to be paid less. I want to know how to provide for my family. And invest in my community. When I grow up, I just want things to be different. At Junior Achievement, we promote economic empowerment through education. But we can't do it alone. So this is Eva, and she goes everywhere with me. Like her, I have this innate sense of curiosity. I really like meeting new people. I love to explore, and right now, I'm trying to travel to every national park across the country. Every morning, that same curiosity is what drives me as a journalist. It's one I'm to be a constant time. It really fuels the type of stories that we do. It defines us as Ohioans, and it's why I'm so excited to call this place home. Fun Facts are sponsored by the Ohio Senior Health Insurance Information Program. about COVID-19, visit coronavirus.ohio.gov. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brianna Rivers. In countless ways, 2020 was a year of tremendous upheaval. As COVID-19 spread to every corner of the world, prominent cases of police violence ignited protests from the smallest towns to the biggest cities. Following the very public killing of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, something broke. People who had never marched or protested, joined rallies, called for change, spoke out. Artists so often on the front line of social movements made the streets their canvas, documenting calls for reform and memorializing those killed by police officers, all the while reminding us of beauty. As we pass the year anniversary of the summer of protest, we asked three activists to reflect on their decisions to speak out against violence. While their experiences differ, their motivations reflect the wider movement for change. This is Activists for Change, one year later. I can't believe it was a year already. Um, back in May of 2020, um, I know where I was. As a black woman, I was tired. I was fed up. I was angry. People demanding changes be made in law enforcement. They want people to know that like this is going on all across the country. Get up, get up. I 
it was a time when people were thinking, oh, if you go to marches, they're trying to burn buildings and loot. I am mobilizing all available federal resources to stop the rioting and looting. I was sad, and I needed to express that some way and somehow. all these people come together. That's not just our civil right for African American or for Asian Americans. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! It's a civil right for all, for all of us. Nearly three weeks after Casey Goodson Jr. was shot and killed it's by Franklin there. County Deputy Jason Meade, his body has been laid to rest. 47-year-old Andre Hill was shot and killed by Columbus police officer Adam Coy. The shooting was caught on Coy's body cam. It's not just Columbus having a tough time with issues of race and policing. 2020 has seen a reckoning across the country with high profile deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and others. The killing sparked mass protests across the country and awoke a movement for justice. As everything was happening, going on last summer, where you know a lot of the police injustice and um, just kind of like systematic oppressive things were coming to light, that I just felt like, yeah, I need to get involved. I need my voice to be heard. I feel like as an artist, I have the ability to to kind of like personify and give a microphone or megaphone to people's voices. And I had the opportunity to work with Ingenuity Cleveland and Downtown Cleveland Alliance through the Voices of Cleveland Project. And what we did is they gave a bunch of artists a platform to paint something that meant something to them or something that kind of wanted to personify, you know, an issue or something going on in our lives. And I chose to go with the Desmond Franklin case because, you know, this was a kid who may have been a little lost, might not have been on the right path all the way, but at the end of the day, you know, he had a family, he was gunned down by an off-duty police officer in traffic while moving in traffic. Kind of made me want to tell that story, and I think I gave his family, you know, a lot of uh, comfort in knowing that, like, their sons and cousin or brother or father was, you know, his story didn't go unseen or unheard. For black people, art and music is a huge part of our culture. It's a huge part of how we express ourselves. It's a huge part of how we get information too. So to see murals go up by black artists in our communities made such a huge impact because it was a daily reminder that we are a part of this community. We are seen in this community and what we have been going through and our ancestors have been going through is literally here in our face every single day. So the power of having black artists put up black murals was just validation. I think with personal pieces, I get to really like, you know, dive into, you know, things that I feel or some, a message that I want to get across and that's even more uh, symbolic to what I'm going through or what I feel like the world's going through. You can only imagine a, a black kid walking past this mural and seeing literally him or herself in that mural and saying like, wow, that's me, that's my people, this is my community. So they're very impactful. And when, you know, they spanned across different cities and I believe some countries and it felt great. As a black woman, it felt great. You know, before there were camera phones, people used art in books, and they used art in paintings, and they used art as currency. And so I feel like art has always been a way to kind of tell the story and, and mark a like, stamp of time in history. It's meaningful that, like, when I create a piece of work that, you know, in the moment, it's very powerful, and it, and, and it generates change, and it makes people think. But the cool thing about art is that even when I'm gone, there are so many other people who are gonna encounter that piece. Uh, let's say it's up for months to a year to years that it can be used as something that kind of like just plants a seed in someone's mind. 
things. I took a step of, or an approach of, from protest to policy. So I went into engaging the community, um, getting them to really activate into politics and into the current political climate so that they can um, be registered to vote or they can engage in voting. So that's kind of where I shifted. And as you see, it worked because we had an amazing election where a lot of people were politically motivated to get out and change the current climate that we were in. And I accredit that to protest. I accredit that to you know people being fed up with police brutality. And I accredit that to just everyone understanding that one, we have an issue, but also what is the solution to address that issue. We see that people vote are usually more likely to vote in a presidential election, but they forget about the local elections. Those local elections matter to your everyday life. Your council matters to your everyday life. Your mayor matters to your everyday life. And that engagement doesn't look like what it did in 2020. You don't have to text 10 people and do all of that or all of those things. It's simply you know, checking out their website understanding that candidate and what that candidate will do for you. While we have made some progress, we also equally have so much more work to do. When we return, we feel like if we go out, we probably have a target on our back. The number of recent attacks on Asians is rising across the country. You know, you see the fear in your kids. As a parent, you just feel like you're not doing enough. Go.